my god. Okay. <laughs> first things first. Literally, hey. <laughs> um, secondly, I'm Leo. A uh, bit about me. I'm bisexual, um, which I only feel like I should mention up top because I feel like a lot of the time people kind of assume that I'm gay, um, which confused me for a lot of my life, but I realized <laughs> recently why that is. Um, I think it's because of the way that I speak <laughs> and the things that I say and how I act. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> um, being bi can be kind of weird, uh, especially explaining it to be pe people, like especially older people. I feel like they're confused because it's not like one thing or the other. It's sort of like a, a little middle ground, sort of gray area. It's like the sexual equivalent of being like a pescatarian or a Lib Dem, <laughs> where people are like, oh, I get it in theory, but like, how does that translate into policy? <laughs> um, <laughs> You know? It's not exactly the same, obviously. When I, well, I feel like when you tell people you're a pescatarian, they don't necessarily go, oh my god, really? But you seem way too camp to like fish. <laughs> um, being, a, being a queer boy was kind of weird at school um, because I went to a school that was just for boys. <laughs> no girls allowed. <laughs> Get out of our treehouse, we're being toxic. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh my gosh, we were so random. Um, as you can imagine, at an all boys school, there was a lot of kind of latent homophobia going on. And sometimes that manifested in really strange ways. Like I remember in year seven, a boy in my class coming up to me and going, hey, put your hand up to your face. Oh my God, soundtrack to this bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a tech heavy set, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this boy in your seven comes up to my set, uh, he comes up to me and he goes, um, put your hand up to your face, right? Because you know if your hand is bigger than your face, that means that you're gay and you have cancer. <laughs> And I remember even at the time thinking, that is insane. That is literally crazy that our bodies have evolved to do that. <laughs> so I put my hand up to my face and my hand is bigger than my face. And in that moment, I have to deal with such an intense diagnosis. <laughs> Because like on the one hand, I might only have a week to live. On the other hand, I might have to spend that week sucking down as many dicks as possible. Like, I'm 11. <laughs> and just as I'm thinking that, this, this boy, he lunges forward, he pushes my hand into my face. I've hit myself in the face and he runs away laughing. And I stand there so embarrassed and I just think to myself, what a low thing to do, you know? To someone who has just found out they have cancer. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, kick me while I'm down, why don't you? <laughs> um, I think those kind of early experiences manifest in my, my romantic life now. Um, I don't consider myself a particularly sexual person. I have trouble expressing my sexuality. Uh, I feel like, for example, when people first meet me, their first impression isn't necessarily, oh my God, what an attractive man, I must fuck him. <laughs> it's more sort of, oh my God, what a tall nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder exactly why he's crying. <laughs> um, I feel like for me personally, like sex is really where I come into my own as an actor. Um, Cause like, I can't be myself during sex, right? I can't be myself during sex, because if I was myself during sex, I would be saying things like, oh God. Whereas actually, I don't know if you know this, but in sex, you're meant to say sort of confident things, like kind of absolutely, like that kind of. <laughs> what I'm saying is sexually, it's very important to be chipper. And I found this out. Um, 
one of the first times I had sex, which is a tale as old as time, chip in if you know the words. Um, I'm 19, he's 24, he's having a house party, it's winding down. He says, do you want to stay over? I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, okay, cool. What you're going to do then is you're going to leave the party, you're going to go around the corner, you're going to wait there until everyone else at the party has left. And then you're going to come back, but make sure you don't run into any of the people that were here because I'd be rather be dead in my own grave than anyone on God's green earth know we're fucking is it will be in shame on my family I'm paraphrasing <laughs> so obviously what I'm thinking at that point is yes yeah, say it with me spring wedding pastel theme and <laughs> cut to an hour later I am having sex with someone who absolutely hates me I know <laughs> hottest thing in the world um and he, uh, he takes that point in time as the perfect moment in his journey um, to express to me um, something that clearly is very important to him. And he does that through the medium of spitting on my face. Now, I don't know necessarily that that was something you would do to a romantic partner. I thought that was something maybe you would do to a street urchin. <laughs> Uh, if you were playing an evil prince in an animated film. <laughs> but he spits on my face. <laughs> he spits on my face and he goes, yeah, do you like that? And I think, be chipper. So, <laughs> so I find myself saying out loud to someone who's just furly spat on my face, yes, it was lovely. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is like, April 14th, save the date and literally buy something lavender. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been Leo Rye. <laughs>